All right, back in the uh, initial phases of starting the hurricane, I did some tests on painting black. Um, I did four test pieces that were broken up into two, but basically these are the two that I like the most. And I, so I took my ideas off of these and I had some actually some wonderful suggestions from people on Instagram as well that contributed. Um, so I won't take all the credit here, but there's a combination of both these that I really like. Um, let me just kind of bring these up close to the camera here. So this one, if we can hopefully get some, it's got a little bit of dust on it, but this is a combination of on this one, it's some tan, some white and gray. And then this is just a couple different types of uh, grays and whites. Um, and you know, there's good tonal variation contrast there. It looks pretty good. And then I modeled over it. And then the blend code on this one is NATO black. Okay, on this one, there's a lot more colors involved. It's a lot of kind of almost gray blacks or almost black grays, so very dark grays, uh, working their range to kind of like warm grays, a little bit of cool, cool grays, and then kind of like a dirty gray to get some of this variation in there. And then this is just a use of light grays and um, whites. So. I like the contrast on this one. The tonal variety looks a lot better. Um, so what I ended up doing is I kind of went with this and took a little bit of aspects from this one. And then I did a test piece with this spare uh, fuselage. And I took it and it's all blended in with what they call night camel black. Um, so you get pretty good tonal variety off of this piece. Um, this side, I went a little bit lighter in the blend coat, so you actually see a little bit more, but it doesn't just look black. And that's what I don't want the hurricane to end up looking like. It's just a black toy. So I want there to be, it looks black, but when you get up close to it, you see it, there's a little bit of tonal variety in there. So the goal of this um, video will be for me to shoot black in this process and kind of go through um, my process for doing it and getting some tonal variety. Um, and also to test out this camera over here and see how it works with um, me airbrushing because I think airbrushing, you're gonna, only going to get so much view from this top camera when I'm airbrushing, but I think this one over the shoulder will kind of help show how I do my entire airbrush process. process. So yeah, we're going to get um, the Hurricane has already been primed in black and then uh, we will start the process of laying down some model coats and I'll let you know what colors I'll be using as I go. And uh, yeah, so this will be a uh, painting in black and then testing out the new camera kind of deal. So hopefully two birds with one stone as we get going here. So um, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. All right, so this has already been primed in Mr. Servicer 1500 black, which is this stuff right here, depending on which you, where you're looking. Um, yeah, nice smooth coat. Um, I did find a couple errors that I had to fix. There was a, um, a ghost seam on the nose, uh, which I had to take care of. Um, it looks like it's in a pretty good spot now. Um, yeah, we'll see. And then uh, everything else is good to go. I do need to spray some silver down here in this radiator area, but um, I may do my base painting first and then come back to that and mask it off. Um, so basically only this little, um, you know, kind of semi-circular type area needs to be painted out. You know, save me some masking of having a stuff masking tape into the radiator area itself. Um, but this is good to go with Mr. Servicer. Everything looks pretty good. And then all the small parts are over here in a box off to the side. Um, and they're also ready to go. Um, and start to get base coat. So uh, the next step here is just kind of get the colors organized and what we're gonna use and the order of uh, how I'm gonna lay things down. So uh, I'll get back in a second. All right, so for this painting process, I'm going to do a base coat in MRP tire rubber matte, then a model coat of eggplant dark gray Then another model coat in certain areas of MP MRP 40. And then some 141, which is neutral gray. And then highlights will be with light Arctic gray. And then for parts that are super grimy, 
you know, um, control surfaces, stuff behind guns, stuff like this. I'm going to use this uh, 241 Dark Sun Chip Gray. Has a little bit of a, uh, a greenish gray kind of tinge to it, and it actually shows up pretty decently in the uh, the blank coat. And then the blank coat itself will be uh, with Night Camouflage Black MRP 255. My bottle's a little haggard. Um, so then that will get blended over, and that will give us the final coat. So that's going to be the order of paint. Um, the way I list that out, I'm going to start from basically the darkest color, and then work my way to the lightest <clears throat> in certain areas. Um, but before I do any of that painting, I want to do some chipping. Um, so I'm going to lay out some areas for some chipping with some outclad um, aluminum. So I'll do that very quickly, and then we'll start on with the uh, actual getting uh, paint down. Okay, I'm gonna spray some Alclad Dull Aluminum um, 117. And this is gonna be for the wheel wells, the radiator scoop, uh, the radiator scoop itself, and then there's a couple of landing gear pieces I have out, out, out of frame that I'm gonna paint as well. I am shooting this with a Iowata HPCS at 15 PSI. Oh, and it's thinned with Mr. Color Rapid Thinner, which is this stuff right here. Um, I just find it makes it uh, flow a little bit better, especially since these outclads are a little old. Um, so, I'm move this over a little bit. You really only need the front face of the actual radiator part. And then it looks like oops, this area here is also so I'm not too worried about overspray on this either because I am going to put a another coat of tire black. That's going to be the initial base coat, so that will cover up most of the overspray from the silver. Um, so not too worried about that. It's just getting in all these little nooks and crannies is the hard part right now. That's the stuff in the fuselage. I'm just going to move this off to the side. There's my all my tiny pieces that need to get sprayed as well. So off of this uh, little piece is going to be the inside of the radiator scoop. It's going to get the same color.
Okay, and then we're going to go with landing gear parts. So this is the tail wheel. Actual landing gear struts themselves. I don't know if my camera shut off or not, but it'll... we will see when I go and review the footage. But it showed a disconnect on my phone a minute ago, so we'll see what happens. So that's the landing gear struts. And then the inside of the landing gear bay doors will also get the same color. Looking at it now, this might be a little bit too dark. So I might need to spice it up a little bit with some a brighter aluminum color. We shall see. Um, I think that's everything that needs to take this color for now. We will see. We'll double check the references in a minute. Okay, so now I'm spraying some alkaline aluminum, just base aluminum, uh, 101, and this will be the chipping layer. Same thing, shooting out of the Iowata HPCS uh, at 15 PSI. And Obviously, a hurricane has mixed parts. It has parts that are made out of metal and it has parts that are made out of fire. So make sure you consult your references and don't, you know, overcoat in silver where uh, fabric is. So most of the work is to get in the wing roos, gun access, stuff like that. But one downside about shooting in black is, man, does it pick up all the little dust and flarm all over the place. And as I'm spraying, I'm trying not to shoot into the wing root so I don't get pebbling and a rough paint texture. So I'm avoiding that as I go. And I'm also doing the leading edges. To do some leading edges and chipping. I want to avoid this uh, aer aerolon because it was made out of fabric, so I'll leave that alone. But I'll basically just get this entire wing. Mm-mm. 
<clears throat> okay, so as I start to approach the wing root, I'm gonna get in tighter and try not to uh, blow all the paint out too aggressively so it doesn't build up and we get pebbling and rough surface texture in there. So I'm gonna get in here as far as I can. Still spraying away from the wing root here. And as I get into the wing root, now I'm I'm getting in here very tight. Um, this is where it helps to have a uh, low air pressure. So like I said, I'm shooting at 15 and I can control the air pressure even more on my Mac valve on my uh, actual airbrush itself. Looks like a pretty good base on that wing. So yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other wing and all the other metal parts on the plane. So I'll come back when I'm done. Okay, so I got the silver chipping layer done. And like I said, I focus on the areas where it is metal. The black areas that are still black uh, are where the fabric would be. So I did the top and bottom. I don't know how much of the bottom I'm gonna chip out, but um, you know, I want to stay consistent, want to look right. So that's all set. Now it's to add time to add uh, the chipping fluid, which for this I use AK's Warn Effects uh, fluid. I just like the way that this chips. It doesn't chip off in huge chunks um, and it leaves more like scratches, which I think chipping, the smaller the chip you can get, I think the, the real, more realistic you can get. So what I do is I lay down two very thin coats of this, because like I said, I don't want stuff just flaking right off. Um, so I'm gonna do two very thin coats of this, I'll lay it down, and in between coats, I hit it with a hair dryer, uh, so it just dries faster, so I'm not waiting for it to dry. The secret with this stuff is, and I've talked about this in a previous video that's on my YouTube, if you spray this stuff and it beads up, huge chunks of paint are gonna come off. If you spray this nice and smooth, it will work exactly how it's designed to work. So. Uh, let me go get an airbrush ready. I still need to clean out from all the silver that I sprayed and then uh, I'll get kind of my utility airbrush ready to spray this so we get a nice smooth coat. Um, so I will get that ready and then I'll come back. Okay, so I ended up getting a, uh, a new bottle of this stuff. So this is, has new print on it. Um, what I noticed when I opened up my container, you might not be able to see it, but there's like this weird like webbing stuff sitting around. And I know AK has a shelf life, um, but it's kind of nasty, so um, to not run the risk of ruining something, I'm not gonna use that. I will use this new bottle I got, and we will go from there. So uh, let me get the airbrush ready and we'll be all set. Okay, for the chipping fluid, I'm using this Procom Boy PS290 with a 0.5 um, millimeter nozzle, and it's shooting at 15 uh, PSI. Um, the hardest part about this is seeing it get sprayed onto the silver. Um, it's such a contrast of a clear liquid on top of silver. It's very hard to see. Um, so I'm going to check my air pressure here. I'm going to adjust it on the Mac valve here. Get to a happy spire. That's too open. Nope, I'm open up all the way. Went the wrong direction. There we go. Okay. Okay, that's off. Okay, all righty. Like I said, once you start to see yourself beat up, move away and go to a different area.
like right there. I, be I beat it up really heavily up there, which won't get chipped, but just kind of, like I said, it's hard to see what you're spraying on this silver. And it kind of sneaks up on you when it does. Oop, and that, like right there, way too much. I'm going to hit it with a hair dryer. Do one more coat, light coat, hopefully lighter than I did last time, because I kind of messed up in a couple areas. All right, so that's kind of the gist for the fuselage. I'm gonna go turn off the cameras. And I'm gonna go spray all the small parts that I wanna have chipped as well, and then uh, we'll come back. Okay, so unfortunately the um, side camera battery died. So we're just gonna work off of uh, the overhead for now. And um, yeah, we'll see how the footage looks. Maybe the overhead camera would just be enough. I know just thinking about it, the way I'm gonna paint, uh, this will probably be good because you can see me doing all my model work and that kind of stuff. It might be hard to see from that. I think I have to play with the over-the-shoulder camera a little bit, but um, we will just roll with this for now and uh, yeah, get going. Okay, so the um, chipping fluid is all dry, um, so now it's ready to start paint. So um, the process for paint here, uh, I kind of have an order that I have it in my paint test how I did it. So we're gonna start out with an overall kind of base coat of this tire black by MRP. All the paints I'll be using here are gonna be MRP, just disclaimer now. So we're gonna start out with this tire rubber, um, it's kind of, kind of a darkish gray, uh, dirty gray. So we're gonna start with that. <clears throat> After that, we're gonna go with eggplant dark gray MRP 205 as a model coat. And this will be in kind of like, uh, recess areas around any big um, hatches or anything like that. Um, we're gonna keep that in dark spaces because it's a darker color. After that, we're gonna go with Gunship Gray. So 36118, uh, which is the FS number. Um, we will go with this. This is a good medium kind of um, shade. After that is Neutral Gray 1943, MRP 141. Then we're gonna go with Light Arctic Gray, which will be a highlight color. Um, so what I like to use this for is if I see any um, 
hatches or little kind of like doodads. I like to highlight it with that so they kind of pop over the entire blank coat. And then I'm gonna use this dark, dark gunship gray as like a grimy color, um, you know, maybe like by um, the gun access hatches or engine hatches like that. I'll model this around because it's kind of, when it shows through the blend coat, it's kind of a dirtyish kind of, uh, you know, tint to it. It's kind of green, but it's still gray and it kind of still, it fits with the motif of all the dark, dark color grays that we're using. And then lastly, the blend coat will be MRP 255. And this is, I know you can't see it, but this is night camouflage black from World War I. Uh, my bottle has been a little haggard. So this will be the overall blend coat. So that's gonna be the process of paint. I'm gonna work my way from the tire black or tire rubber, and I'm gonna work from the darkest color of model coats to the lightest. Um, so let me get uh, things squared away and uh, we'll get ready to paint. Okay, so we're going with tire rubber matte in the Procom Boy PS771, which is a 0 0.18 millimeter nozzle. And we are just gonna go lightly lay a coat of this over all the silver and a little bit parts of the black. And I really don't care about exact coverage on this. I kind of want it to be a little dirty and modeled because I'm just going to model over the top of it. And I don't want this coat to be too heavy because I need to chip through it. Um, and that's the hardest thing about using MRP is MRP is pretty resilient to chipping fluid. Um, but we will lay down this pretty light because this will probably be the heaviest coat. All the model coats will be pretty thin. But like I said, it doesn't have to be a perfect coat. We're just kind of getting some color modulation and variation in the paint. So um, I will get the rest of this going and then I will come back and uh, go to the next step. Okay, so now we're gonna spray model coats and we're gonna start using eggplant dark gray as our first coat. And I'll be using an assortment of uh, paint stencils from Propeller 77 or 77 Propeller and from Ushi. Um, they're Trinity splatter set. So I'll use a combination of those and also you do some freehanding as well. So with this color, I'm keeping it towards um, the darker areas around ring, wing roots, um, maybe areas uh, <clears throat> on the side underneath, and then definitely a lot of areas underneath on the uh, bottom. I'm actually gonna start with the bottom and work my way to the top. And I'm working this color kind of close to panel lines. Just kind of haphazardly going around the panel line. Nothing too precise. Just that's where the shadow is going to be and that's what I'm doing with this color. It's kind of a shadow. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but I'm just kind of working my way close to panel lines. To get some variation when the darker color goes on top of that.
All right, next up we're going with Gunship Gray, and this will be in kind of a random pattern all over the airframe, focusing towards more the middle of the, where I've done the kind of the last shade of color. So we're gonna work our way around uh, kind of in a similar fashion that we did last time. Okay, next up is Neutral Gray, 43. We're sticking with this towards the center of panel lines, or center of panels that is, sorry. Just to lighten some things up. I'm also going to go pretty heavy with this on the fabric area to kind of put a little bit of a distinction that that's fabric and not metal.
Okay, next color is light arctic gray. And we're gonna use this towards the center of things, flat surfaces, uh, little hatches and stuff they want to have pop out of the, the blank coat. Um, so not gonna use a ton of this, but it, I will use a decent amount of it. The last color is dark gunship gray, which will be used in just certain spots where uh, fluid leaks, grime build up, uh, that kind of thing. Okay, so there she is all modeled up. This is before the blend coat. There she is top side. Like I said, I want the these panels to show a little bit more. Just get some tonal variation all over. Um, so the, the next part will be a blend coat and that will be of MRP 255 night camouflage black. So I'm gonna thin this Probably about 60 40, 60% uh, mister color, color leveling thinner to 40% paint because I want to build up the effect. And as usual, when I do this, I usually start on the bottom uh, so I can see kind of how it's going to start to work its way out. So let me mix up this paint and then I'll start spraying uh, the blend coat on the bottom. All right, so what I learned from this when I was doing my test is you really got to watch this because it will creep up on you, then all of a sudden everything disappears. So I have this uh, thin 60-40, thinner to paint, and just slowly build it up and uh, just make sure, you know, if it looks too stark, walk away from it, you know, it'll fade back a little bit. So um, let's just start on the underside here and see what we got.
Okay, I'm gonna work around this and uh, I'll come back and I'll catch up later. Okay, there she is all sprayed up. Um, I think the camera kind of catches some tonal variation here and there. It's tough because uh, the finish is a semi-gloss in the um, Night Camel Black, so there's a little bit of a sheen, but to the naked eye, I definitely see some tonal variation. Maybe if I bring it up a little bit closer. Yeah, you kind of catch it in the light. It's not too stark, um, but I see it. It's there. It'll probably be easier to see once uh, I spray a flat coat, but uh, we're not there yet. So right now, we're going to let this chill for a couple minutes, and then we're going to go and start chipping at it. So let me clean up all the crap I have out right now, and then uh, I'll get some water in my chipping brushes, and we'll go to town chipping. Okay, so for chipping, I'm not gonna go crazy in depth with this because I have a video dedicated to this, but basically, here's the gist of it. I have two things of water here. This is just water out of a little tiny water bottle. Nothing special about it. <clears throat> Use one of these brushes to get the area wet. It's gonna take a little bit to get this to soak in because this is kind of the nature of MRP. But like I said, I'm not going to go cr crazy on this. Probably some wing root chipping, uh, some gun panels, and leading edge, and some stuff underneath the cockpit. And that'll probably be about it. I know I sprayed all that stuff, but uh, you know I'm not going to go too crazy. Because apparently this camouflage was field applied. It was brush painted on, most likely. Or at least that's what uh, my, resource or my research material says. So, yeah, we're gonna take it easy. I'm just gonna get this worked in, work our way a little bit further out. Right now we're just trying to get this to penetrate into the chipping fluid. There's a couple hacks you can do to this as well to help this out. One of them is you can get a paper towel wet with water and then leave it on the wing for a couple minutes and it will help it absorb a little bit. I think I might actually do that because this seems pretty resistant right now. But let's try to work at it with... This is a uh, fix-it brush, a number two fix-it. It has very um, rough bristles but we will try to work our way at it and then you can also use things like a, a needle and a thing and try to Get it started at least. I'm going to work at this and I'll, I'll come back when I finish this wing and show you where I'm at. Well, it took a little while, but it's all chipped up. Um, you know, so wing roots around the cockpit, leading edges of the wings, and some areas around the landing gear doors. Um, so, yep. MRP was pretty uh, tough to chip into, so it took a while, but we're in a good spot, <clears throat> ready to move on. So yeah, it took a little while to get the uh, editing and wrapping up this video um, because I got sick in the middle of the week, um, and I really didn't do an outro after I finished up the last clip, um, but I did take some pictures. They do, they're not the best pictures, but they show kind of um, 
some of the tonal variation, the chipping, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that was my uh, process for uh, painting black. Uh, I hope you found it interesting, uh, informative, and you took something away from it. Um, I think it yielded some pretty good results um, that I'm happy with, and now just need to move on to um, sealing all the work in, and then uh, I guess it's on to uh, decals. So I will catch you guys later. Thanks for checking it out. Um, this is Ace Spades Model Works. Adios.